Hey everyone, what's going on? Force here, and today I want to talk a bit about Nightingale. You know, since this game was first announced at the Game Awards a little over two years ago, it's been two years? Really? Jeez, time flies. Huh? I've been keeping a pretty close eye on this one. Now, initially, it was the unique art style and setting that grabbed my attention, but then over time, after learning more about the type of game they were making, I started to get more and more interested. So Nightingale is described as a shared world multiplayer survival crafting game. Stop me if you've heard this one before. Although in this particular instance they've got a few things for one it's set in this gas lamp fantasy world which far as I can tell gas lamp fantasy is some combination of Victorian with steampunk mixed with a bit of fairy tale and fantasy of course uh, it'll have all the fundamental systems that you expect from survival genre you'll be exploring gathering materials base building crafting items tools and weapons all of which you'll use to make better stuff take on PvE threats with a variety of enemies and bosses while you equip yourself to adventure out into more more dangerous, deadly, and rewarding areas. A few of the more unique features of Nightingale that really make it stand apart for me personally include the realms, this never-ending series of locations with a variety of expected biomes. You'll see forests, swamps, deserts, jungles, and so on, each with their own distinct visual appearance, unique points of interest, plant and animal life. There's NPC factions and, of course, dangerous foes. So you'll travel between realms using portals, which take special realm cards to activate, and then to Depending on the cards you unlock and use, you're able to select certain parameters, including a realm's enemies, the biome, the type of weather, the day-night cycle, and even what resources are found there. It's sort of like spinning up world seeds with specific things that you might happen to want or need for your character, for your progression, for your base building, for whatever. Also, the setting and enemies are another big standout for me, as the world of Nightingale is inhabited by a wide range of Victorian folklore-inspired creatures. There's harpies. Bandersnatch, massive hill giants, trees that come to life, mischievous fey, and one predominant faction known as the Bound. This is a group of rival humanoids that come in a variety of class types like swarmers, casters, tanks, and archers. This faction will act as a constant threat throughout the course of playing the game and will even frequently attack your base in incursions which need to be defended against. Now from what we've seen and heard, the basic loop of the game is going to be, you know, the starter stuff of gathering and crafting and fighting while you then go out and explore trying to discover character upgrades and unlock new realm cards and then using the cards you find you open portals progressing into new deadlier and more rewarding realms and repeating the process of gathering crafting fighting and getting upgrades at that higher tier with the ultimate goal of being to try to end and eventually reach the city of nightingale there will be pinnacle content and challenges to work towards already we've seen a variety of different boss fights that we can expect to engage with. We also know that they do have plans for challenging and repeatable end game content, although we're unsure of the specifics as of yet. Uh, and there will of course be unique and powerful gear along with character upgrades to discover. Base building plays a big role with a lot of variety, customization, and utility in both single or group built bases as this game does have co-op as well. And lastly, yes, the game will have lore and story, although from what I've gathered, it's more of a backdrop and world building type of story not something that's the central focus of the game, which frankly is the type of storytelling that I personally enjoy, especially in survival games and MMOs. I don't need hours and hours of cinematics. Just give me an interesting world to explore with some bits of lore here and there, some cool characters and some cool mini stories. So that is Nightingale in a nutshell. Um, now, as I said at the top though, it has been nearly uh, two full years since this game was revealed, which I, I still can't believe. But also, it's been over a year since the last time we did any coverage on it here on the channel. And quite a lot has happened since then. Most notably, as time has gone on, development has continued, and we have learned a lot more about the game, about specific features and mechanics and things that they've added. They've also been releasing trailers and fairly frequent developer vlogs with updated gameplay, and also just sharing a lot about how development and testing is going. And I got to say, even from just last year, the game is looking significantly better today, a whole lot better than I remember it looking, which is part of what spurred me making this video. I, I watched some of the more recent stuff and was like, this looks really good. It looks, again, much better than I happen to recall, and it has climbed its way 
to near darn near the top of my list of like most anticipated games coming out in the next six to 12 months. I'm really looking forward to Nightingale. Wanted to dive in and learn as much new stuff as I could about the game. And hey, if I'm doing that, might as well share it with you all, right? So let's do exactly that. We're going to take a look at all the new things that have been revealed since last year. Starting in November of 2022, this is when they released their very first developer update video. This one was focused on the earliest alpha testing, Unreal Engine 5 updates, as well as answering a few community questions. So at the start, they said they had just wrapped up the first round of closed alpha with about 100 people testing the early game experience, focused particularly on the survival mechanics and progression. With feedback from that test, they made the decision to streamline and simplify the crafting mechanics in order to make it more intuitive for newer players, which they would then be implementing into subsequent rounds of testing, of which there have since been quite a few. They also discussed having made the uh, move to Unreal Engine 5, which was actually one of the reasons for the game's delay out of 2022. Yes, originally this was supposed to be coming out in late 2022. That obviously did not happen. Now with Unreal Engine 5, they got all the expected host of visual and fidelity improvements, all thanks to Lumen and Nanite. Continue to see more and more developers talking about just how great this engine is. Certainly we are seeing the byproduct of that in a lot of the big boost in visual fidelity, uh, just games looking better thanks to UE5. They then went on to answering a few community questions from which we learn the following. Character progression in Nightingale is all about the items and gear based. Apparently we're not going to be expecting a lot of uh, character development from things like skill trees or increased stats uh, from leveling up or something like this. In order to make yourself stronger, you'll be crafting items and gear. Those items and gear will be using resources that you find from all around the realms. And that's something else that we know a big part of the game is going to different realms in search of different specific resources to do this crafting and to make yourself stronger, letting you progress further. They also said that beyond enemy variety, difficulty will be increasing as you progress through the realms. The further you go, the harder things get. You get more challenging realms, you get better realm cards that unlock access to higher tiers, new enemies, new bosses, stuff like that. And then finally, they revealed in this vlog that the building system in Nightingale is going to be blueprint based. So rather than placing down individual logs or blocks or whatever, you've got blueprints for the various section of the bases, the walls, the doors, the roof, etc. Uh, this will include the expected variety of tile sets. So let's say you start with wood and then you probably advance to stronger forms of wood and then stone and then metals and so on. Outside of the buildings themselves, you're also going to be able to construct defensive structures, crafting benches, processing facilities, you know, the usual fare that you expect from a survival crafting game. The next developer update came in December, upon which time they had just finished the second alpha test with around 600 people in this one, testing out some of the improvements that were made to the early game. They also began testing co-op, which includes groups of up to six players. Not sure if that is the final cap, but that's at least what it was in this test. In this, they fixed some texture issues, some crashes. They added some quality of life improvements, like removing tree stumps from trees you've chopped and also re-equipping your hot bar whenever you get your inventory back from a death chest, which I guess is confirmation that when you die, you drop your stuff and then you have to go retrieve it. Uh, and then finally, they revealed that they would be adding fishing to the game. Not the most important feature, but a nice little bonus extra thing. Uh, no complaints uh, from me personally. L love to see it. Also in December, they released this uh, brief trailer called the Realm Walker's Journey. This gave us a few glimpses of some never before seen stuff. In this, we saw some new monsters. We saw some examples of magic, uh, crafting, building, and even that newly introduced fishing. We also saw, this was brand new to me, gliding with umbrella. Personally, love to see it. I much prefer it over straight up flying that lets you just go anywhere unrestricted. Gliding allows you to kind of play with the exploration, having to go to a height before you can uh, fall your way down. Uh, and then also climbing is going to be in the game as well. We saw a, a clip of someone climbing with these pickaxes, which we actually got a first person gameplay peek at uh, a little bit later here. Next up, we got a developer update in February. So they took a couple month break and then returned here. They also happened to take a few months off of playtesting in that time to just focus on development, on adding new stuff, and on improving what's there. So in this time, they introduced tons of new foliage, resources, and creature variation, all aimed at fleshing out the world and making it more immersive. They also added new tile types for the base building system. They made some adjustments to gathering to try to make it feel more impactful, specifically trying to balance the inputs with the animations and then the feedback that you get from that. And they announced that they would be having dedicated official servers, so you won't have to rely on a host in order to join a server if you played together. This is great news in my opinion. Uh, in a lot of games that don't have dedicated servers, if I'm playing with
playing with a friend and we're having a good time, but then they go offline and I want to keep on playing. Just kind of screwed. You can't make any more progress on your base building, on your resource gathering. So it's nice to see that they will have official dedicated servers that just once created stay up and running 24 seven, or at least until there's any server downtime. These servers will also, they said, play into the realm cards, like making it always day or, or making hard mode. So apparently the realm card system is going to uh, play a role in just the overall server settings. Now they did say that they are planning to have private servers in the future, but it won't be there for early access launch. Also, they did make mention of modding being something that they're looking into. They would like to include, but this also won't be there for the early access release. So at early access, we're just going to be getting official dedicated servers. I think that's a fine baseline, especially for an early access release. I, I do hope by the time they leave early access and they have the official release that if they are continuing to move forward with private servers and modding, obviously we would like all of that there by the time they leave early access. More updates came in March where they announced that they continue to do more play test, uh, particularly focused on a new and improved combat system, which the developer said players were happier with. I mean, who knows? I didn't play it, uh, but yeah, uh, apparently the combat got better from what they're saying. And also this is when they started testing the end game systems. Uh, so we do know that there is going to be end game of some sort, although I've yet to see or hear any specifics at any point of what exactly this entails. Here they also added a new opening cinematic and they did briefly share some screenshots taken by a few of their testers. It was also at this point in this March update that they announced that they would be targeting a mid-2023 early access release. We are past mid-2023. That means they didn't hit it. Well, in April came an update where they said they would be pushing back the launch to quarter four 2023, so the last quarter of the year, in order to continue working on and improving the game. They ran a test with about 12,000 people. They have been progressively increasing the number of people with every test. So 12,000 people ran in the April uh, alpha test. This ran for about two weeks continuously, giving people time to really progress, to play a lot, and to reach and actually start testing the end game. They also made a few game updates. They added workbenches that could be upgraded. So you'd be able to place down specific compatible decorations. And then depending on what you placed, it would create unique traits for your benches, adding buffs and at times even consequences. They added environmental traits that can buffer debuff benches. So for example, if you build a roof over a bench, it will give it the shelter trait, which lets you refine faster. Or for tool benches, they can get the whetstone trait if you place the proper decoration nearby. And doing this will boost the damage of any bladed tools you happen to craft on that bench. So there's going to be a whole lot of va uh, variability and potential enhancements that you can give to whatever particular workbenches are in the game. You know, weapon benches, armor benches, potions, whatever they end up having, there will be some sort of enhancement system for many of these. And they introduced some new creatures here in the April update. The Hexamongrel, the Eliphas were both added to the desert regions. The Lipluridon, or I can't pronounce half of these names, uh, was added to the swamps region. And they added also three different new bug type enemies enemies like this dung beetle, grasshopper, and scorpion. So as time goes on, they're just continuing to flesh out the variety of enemies and creatures we'll be seeing in the world. July came around and included another update. They showed some really cool environmental shots. Love some of the sky boxes here. We also get to see that first person pickaxe climbing. This is actually uh, pretty cool. Like for, I, I don't know why it's not used more often. Just yeah, pickaxe climbing the side of mountains instead of just trying to like Skyrim awkwardly climb like the slightly angled terrain up. Uh, yeah. Just give us a pickaxe and let us scale vertical cliffs. Sounds great. And then they also added a brand new game starting point called the Nightmare Realm. So this would be the introduction to the story of the game and starting off on uh, sharing some of the lore about it. Also, this is where the intro tutorial is. And they said this is where you choose your starting biome. Kind of interesting that they're letting you just pick what biome you want to spawn into. They also added some difficulty options where you can basically choose your starting loadout as well as the difficulty level per the realm. So you can decide to start with great gear in an easy zone or in with no gear in a very difficult zone, whatever combination of difficulty settings, um, there'll be quite a few of them for you to pick from. And also in July, they revealed that they were adding third person mode. I am pumped. I really like seeing my character in these games. They said the priority will still be first person. This is primarily a first person game, but that they wanted to include third person for those who want or need it for accessibility. Accessibility aside, that is a, a great reason to do it. But 
I just like seeing my character in these games, especially when there's gear and I'm going to be changing how my character looks. I like to be able to see that character, so I'm happy that they've added this. A month later in August, we got the release date trailer, and I got to say, dude, from this trailer alone, the game is looking great. With every subsequent update, this game just starts to look better and better from the visual quality to the animations to the environment and ambient look of everything. Clearly, the shift to Unreal Engine 5 was worth it because much improved to the earlier gameplay showcases. So in the release date trailer, we saw a bit of combat. Also, just reiterating here, animations with this stuff look really good. We saw some showcases of magic, fishing, crafting, building, and swimming. A bunch of new biomes that we hadn't seen before. We saw various weapons and magic in use. We saw some of the expansive building system. We saw this big old giant using magic. And they showed off some new monsters as well as what seemed to be a few different boss fights. And finally, with the release date trailer, they revealed that it was being delayed again out of 2023 into 2024 specifically coming to early access on February 22nd. Hopefully they stick with this one. Although regardless, as always, fine with delays if it means that the launch product is going to get better. And that's exactly what they address in the most recent and last update, which came in September. So the release delay was done, they say, to make the game as finished as it can possibly be for early access. They want to deliver on players' expectations and have solid foundations that they can then build upon while the game is in early access. They said that even though it is an early access launch, that they are aware that they only get one shot at a public launch, so they want to take the extra time to make the impression a good one. Yes, yes, they get, they get it. They get, this is the problem. This is my biggest issue with so many early access launches. We get these games coming out into early access. They're justified as not feeling complete or not feeling polished enough or not feeling like they have enough features or content as, hey, it's just early access and it's true. And we go into early access with the understanding that these games aren't done, but it's also true that you get one first shot. And for a lot of people, if that first shot doesn't have to be complete, but if it's not good enough, they might just never check out your game again. Now, this isn't always the case. You get a game like Baldur's Gate 3 that had an early access launch that lasted three years before it finally released. And you might say, well, hey, that's way too long. And people would have had their first impression and then forgot about it. But clearly that's not what happened. But Baldur's Gate 3, for a lot of reasons, is an exception and not the rule. And in many, many cases, what we end up seeing is games coming into early access that aren't done, that are too buggy, that have too little content, or just are outright bad for their early access release, and that people play, refund, and forget about. And they don't even care when the 1.0 version happens and I feel like it's a real shame that ends up killing off a lot of games that could have had way more potential so I'm happy to hear that inflection games as a studio is deciding do these delays as much as you need to until you feel like it's really a solid product even though it's still early access as close to feeling finished as possible I think is a good way to do it happy to hear that they made this decision frankly since that developer update in September we have gotten one additional video it was this uh called workbench wonders like an ASMR crafting video, which sounds kind of whatever, but man, it looked really, really good. Although it was focused on the audio side of things and the visual coziness, just again, I'm continuously impressed every time they show this game, the visuals, the animations, the lighting and environmental effects, everything looks progressively better. And this being the most recent gameplay focused trailer, it looks about as good as anything has up until this point. I mean, this is, I understand why they call this an ASMR video because damn, it gives me some real cozy, good vibes, really happy and really excited to actually get in and get my hands on this. Like I said at the top here, as the development has continued and as we've continued to get updates over these past two years, I've been getting progressively more interested and excited about this game. I just think it's really shaping up to be something really, really promising. So I'm so looking forward to Nightingale. Currently, the uh, latest release date of hitting Steam Early Access on February 22nd, 2024, uh, which puts it roughly three months away, that is still in place. And while I hope they hit it, again, I'll reiterate, uh, just make, make sure the game feels great for that early access launch because it is your only first impression for a lot of people. That does it for today though. Thanks as always for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the vid. Um, if any other big updates happen to come out before the February launch or if there's some early testing that I happen to get my hands on, I'll be sure to keep you updated because yeah, looking forward to this one. Uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.